We've all had an encounter with God. Actually, everything that we do at River of Life is about that. It's our goal in everything. It's about creating opportunities for you to have an, and, and us to have an encounter with the presence of, of the living God. Whether it's in worship or the word or your giving or your serving in an outreach, it's all about you experiencing a moment with God where God can grab a hold of your heart. That's, that's all it is. That's all we do is facilitate moments for you to have that encounter. And every week, people have encounters with God right here in this place because the Bible tells us, it promises us that when we gather together as one body and we call on his name, that he meets us here every single time. So every time that we gather together, the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the presence of the living God is here in this room waiting to encounter you. And it happens all the time. But just praying that prayer or just having that moment at the altar or in your seat where you experience the love of God, when you experience the presence of God, just having that encounter isn't enough to sustain you for your life. Now, don't get me wrong. When you have that encounter and you give your life to God, you are saved in that moment. But you got a whole lifetime to get to eternity. And Jesus told us that we needed the helper. We needed the Holy Spirit to get us through. So just having an encounter with God isn't enough. Isn't enough. Encountering the, the Spirit of God is a merciful gift. God in his mercy allows us to have these encounters where he grabs hold of our heart, but remaining in his spirit, that is an intentional act of dedication. And it's very hard to do, especially in the world that we live in. It's hard to do, but the reward is immeasurable. Because when we remain in his spirit, we remain in his freedom. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, finish it. There is freedom, right? We sing that song, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, right? We sing that song. You guys are all jumping. We declare it. We're excited about it. It gets us pumped up. Yes, we're like Mel Gibson and Braveheart. Freedom, right? Yeah, it's awesome. I love that song. Love that verse. It gets us going. And we've read it so many times that I think it's actually telling us more than what we're, what, what we're reading into. Where the spirit of the Lord is freedom. But I think what it's also saying is that outside of the presence of the Lord, there is not freedom. Freedom can only be found inside his presence. And I think most of us in this room have probably experienced this. Did you ever have that moment where you came to the altar and you just gave it to God? You were like, I'm so tired of this sin that I'm dealing with. I'm so tired of this worry or this anxiety. I'm just lifting it up before you. Maybe you stayed in your seat and you said, you know what, God, I'm giving it to you. And, you, and like Hannah was saying, ugly cried, Right? Just boogers down your nose. You're, you're just giving it to God. Don't care what anyone, what, what anyone sees. And you just feel that freedom, that yoke of slavery just come off of you. Whatever it is, sin, shame, brokenness, you just feel it come off of you in that moment. And in that moment, you feel lighter than you've ever felt. Freedom is in the room when you have that moment with God. And then you get up from the altar. You get up from your seat. You get up and you leave your prayer closet and you step outside and something happens. Something happens that, that, that uh, causes your attention to go off of God and suddenly you're worried again. Suddenly you're, 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 you're being full of anxiety about that thing that's happening in your life or, or, or something happens and you fall back into sin that you had thought you thought you had freedom from it. What happened? It makes you doubt whether or not you truly experience freedom. But church, what I want to tell you today is that the freedom that you experience in an encounter with God is real. You just forget to take the freedom with you when you leave. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. That was really good. I'm just saying. Yeah. I just forced you guys to clap for my point. <laughs> All right, I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say it again, and then we're going to get a real chair out, all right? The freedom that you experience in an encounter with God is real. You just forgot to take it with you. For those of you watching the stream later, how authentic was that cheer? 
Galatians 5.1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Christ desires for you to have freedom. It's why he went to the cross, so that you can experience freedom. But Paul says, stand firm in it. We have to stand firm in his freedom. And his freedom is found in the presence of God. We have to stand firm in the presence of God. And if we do that, then we will never again pick back up the yoke of slavery. But what happens far too much is we come in, we lay it before God, we have this great moment of worship, but then worship ends and the pre-roll starts to slide on here and you've got to go to lunch. And before you leave, you pick that yoke back up and you put it on your shoulders and once again, you're walking in the slavery that you were once delivered from. God wants more for, more for you than that, church. The way that we stay in that freedom is that we keep in step with the Spirit, like Paul says in Galatians 5.25. So how do we do that? Well, I have four ways that we're going to keep in step with the Holy Spirit, and they're four quick ways. 